in a state where, I want to talk about power. So in a state where we just, in a city, where we just saw, was it 13 people hanging from a bridge with flags to block a ship from breaking ice to drill oil in the Arctic, when thousands and hundreds of people are celebrating that at the Cathedral Park last night and also tonight, when dozens and dozens of kayakers join to try to thwart the same ice-breaking ship in a state where, according to the annual values and beliefs study, nearly six in ten Oregonians say there should be stronger government policies to reduce greenhouse gas emissions, and just two in ten disagree. Why does that environmental fervor, environmental history, environmental political support not translate into political power? Money. Andrea Durbin. <laughs> and it, Christian or Andrea, anything you would add? I, I'm, I am not, I'm not a asking you to add to that because I think it is false. I'm asking you to add so that we give it full shrift. Well, I do. Tom is absolutely right. I think people would, might be surprised to know that the oil industry spent $2 million in the state of Oregon last year to try to defeat this, this program. And that is in a state where, state of Oregon, we don't have any oil refineries, we don't have any oil interests in state, but they are, they are singling out this state because they know that this program actually impacts their industry, it requires them to change, that's the intent of it. And, they, and it, because it's proven and effective, that is why they're fighting it so, so hard. It's not in Oregon alone. They're waging the same campaigns across, uh, up and down the West Coast as Oregon collaborates with our West Coast states, together we're the fifth largest economy in the world, and together we're trying to establish this clean fuels policy up and down the West Coast, that that will have an impact on the oil industry. That does drive market change. It does lead us to transition to provide more clean fuel choices to, to consumers. So that's why this is so, so important. Um, and we're kind of a battleground state for the oil industry right now because we're requiring them to actually change their, the way they operate. Tom. So in, in, in my perspective, it's really kind of amazing. It, we talked about some of the partners on the transportation package. Uh, beyond that, the business community, all the major business uh, organizations, AOI, OBA, um, all supported the transportation package. I mean, it was, it was the thing that came out of the business summit, uh, I think it was in January, um, that was set as the highest priority. Everybody agreed, the governor, everybody agreed. Um, to have that not happen is probably what's got my ire up, that to see um, essentially a, you know, a, a, a bill that was passed by our legislature, um, signed by the governor, to be then, I, I, I hesitate to use this word, but held hostage, um, and, and that's, that's what happened. Um, we, we had a really good policy held hostage because of disagreement over another policy, even though the majority in our legislature, people elected by our citizens, um, elected these people to go and represent us. So that, to me, was just really frustrating. <laughs>